please welcome a player who has taken the game by storm since his arrival from Australia over 10 years ago. Three times a Masters finalist, winner here in 2012, twice a UK champion, he's also a world champion. He is the Thunder from Down Under. Here's Neil Robertson. <laughs> And his opponent, a player who won the first of his six Masters titles as a teenager in 1995. He has been entertaining snooker crowds here and around the world for more than two decades. Five times a world champion, the defending Masters champion, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Practically yeah, what an atmosphere, but that introduction was something very special and Ronnie looks pretty Thank relaxed, you, and he doesn't usually smile round. like that. So. Ronnie O'Sullivan for that. <laughs> Ronnie who did win the toss and he will get this quarter-final match underway. Very difficult to predict the winner of this one, John. Yes, uh, boys were talking at the top of the show about the records coming into this. I think probably the main match I'd concentrate on is that Welsh Open because Robertson was 5-2 ahead in that before Ronnie put the afterburners on to win seven frames on the trot, which I don't think anybody in the game would win seven frames in a trot against Robertson. But And then since then, of course, the semi-final in the European Masters and Ronnie beat him 6-0 and made five breaks over 60 in that match, so whether Neil will be remembering that five. or this is just and a case of another day, we'll soon find out. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Well, they come up short there. That was interesting because the table has been absolutely flying, a very quick cloth, but this is a new cloth on, and even if it's off the same roller cloth, it'll be interesting to see if this table plays as quick. It's the same table, but if the cloth plays as fast, as the previous one, we'll find out in a couple of shots' time. Good safety there from Neil. Might be able to get past the yellow and blue for that red, but looking at that angle, there's no value in taking that on because he'd be careering into the reds. If it was straight, he could have a go at it and get onto the black. Well, apparently, I've just found out that just the cushion cloths have been changed. So the bed of the table will play it the way it has been. It's strange why they would change the cushion cloth. They, they weren't really bouncing that much at all, John. No, I suppose if anything's going to wear out quicker, it will be the cloth on the cushions, of course, in the jaws of the pockets. That's probably why that's been done, but anyway, the best safety from Ronnie there. Caught the bump on the middle pocket. Excellent cueing. <laughs> from Neil Robertson. Nothing straightforward, that. see much of Neil's match with Ali Carter. I was on in the afternoon, but apparently 
He played very well. Five. Yeah, I was chatting with Neil the other day just before he came out and, and played, and he was saying that scoring wise, he felt like he was right back to his best. He made 13 century breaks in a little mini league thing he was playing in, so you don't do that, do that unless you're hitting the ball properly. But one of the things you really do need to do if you're playing Ronnie O'Sullivan in what can be deemed Twelve. his backyard is you need to have plenty of character, you need to stand up to it. That's where the Aussie grit comes into it. 13. <coughs> Two fabulous players. You've got the abundance of natural talent in O'Sullivan. Best player I've ever seen with a cue in his hand. And then you've got the Australian with a laser like cue action. Tremendous break builder and all round match player with that Aussie grit. Great matchup. 18. I mean, what this player achieved in the 2013-2014 season might never be done again to make a hundred centuries in one season. That is extraordinary. 90. Still got a red in the middle there before he has to play any cannon, so he can stun this in and leave the one there. You can see it. In fact, there's a couple of them is available. He's coming up a little bit short, though. Might just be OK. 26. He's having to go away from the black here. But, uh, 27. Needs to pull up a little bit. That's OK. And he could play a little cannon into the five reds there because it's a thinnish one on the blue. And this could really open things up. 20. He went delicately in the reds. 32. Yes, nicely played that little cannon, but Got to come out a little better. Just got to play this and avoid the cannon on the red that's near the side cushion when you pop this one. She's managed to 30. do one already by his demeanour in this break. You can see Neil Robertson knows the importance of a good start in this match. He looks tuned up and ready to go right from the off. Started the season off pretty well, won early on and had a semi-final and, and a couple of disappointing results by his own standards since then, but as I say, starting to make all those centuries in the last couple of weeks and the hard graft he's put in over Christmas time. If he gets back to his best, he'll take some stopping. He's that good. Yeah, I was surprised that he dropped down to number seven in the world. He certainly, as Stephen Hendry said, should be in the top three, you would think. But that's how tough the game is these days, and you can quite easily slip down the rankings a little bit if you if you have a bit of a lean spell. Yeah, he's just taking a bit of time with this one because it's not, you can see there, just over a minute, but it, he's just got to try and get the next positional shot right because the red he was looking at He's just got to try and, if he can get straight on this, it'll be absolutely perfect. He doesn't really want to be playing any cannons. How's he come? Well, that's 38. not straight, so... Just wondering what he's going to do here. This is not straightforward. He might... Yeah, I'm surprised he came up off the shot there. Thirty-nine. Well, he didn't want to risk the delicate little cannon to hold on the black there. Just forced it in, uh, hoping to drop nicely on pink or blue, but it's not absolutely perfect. He's got to avoid the bulk colours and 
Go back up in to the scoring end of the table. Yeah, in and out of the book area. I think those two reds that are near the black definitely pot. And he couldn't have hit that much better. That was a lovely 44. shot. Really well controlled. Looking in good, Nick. Forty-five. Yeah, he got round on those two reds uh, with the aid of a little uh, flick on the brown here, as you can see. But you can expect this from these two players. I think if <coughs> the other makes a mistake, the way they're playing, fifty-one. Every chance they'll finish the frame off. Yes, but how 50. important is it, Dennis, to stick your marker down in a match? You know, you many a time in commentary say about Steve Davis used to be brilliant winning the opening frame. It's very important just to let your opponent know you're here to play and you're at your best. And this is what Neil Robertson's doing. This is hugely 50. impressive. Fifty nine. Very difficult to start with a century break, but uh, he's almost over the winning line 66. already in this opening frame. 67. Have to wait for the next frame now, because Ronnie does need a snooker, regardless of what happens. He's got a chance to move either of the little sets of two reds there have to play a double if he's going to have a chance of a century Seven double but the frame is well and truly in the bag just checking that looking at the scoreboard so you might as well have a go at the double Neil Robertson, well, no century break, and but uh, what a start from the Australian. He got one chance, and that was all he needed. And that lovely break has given him the opening frame. It's one nil to Neil Robertson. Just doubled the red. Well, he was a bit unlucky to catch the jaw and leave the red over the corner. It wasn't right over the corner. It was a good opening pot jaw. Mm, well, this was. Uh, we, we mentioned how good his cue action is. This is right through it. It's uh, a lot more difficult than it looks on the screen, but beautifully struck. And as you say, the rest is history. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Second frame. Neil Robertson to break. That's a pity, the break-off shot is just put a red right next to the black and put it out of commission. Neither player would have liked to have seen that. It just means that Ronnie can't take this red on to the left corner because there's no uh, colour available. Touching ball would help. Touching ball. Touching, yeah. And Amber Haas declared touching ball. Can you believe it, John? It's 25 years since Jan Verhaas came on the scene as a referee. Yeah, one of the very best and a lovely man. We've all got older together. Could be touching again. Touching ball. And it is. Ronnie might as well just stay where he is because he's going back into a similar position. Sorry. This time Ronnie can play back down the table. You can see 
the edge of the pack there. Ronnie's good friend, Damien Hurst, renowned artist. He didn't think he'd be back today because he thought Liang Wembo would have potted the black and knocked Ronnie out. Just a, a very easy black to knock the six times former champion out. Wow. Doesn't want to leave a free Miss ball here. Neil Robertson, five. And he hasn't, but he's left. A long pot on. I wonder how Neil will take this. Will he go around the back of the... If we just show you again, he just caught the blue. Whoa. But Neil can play around on the blue, or he could play to nudge the red away from the black. Well, it was the first time in a while I've seen him cue across the ball there. Usually a feature of Neil's cue action that it goes straight through. But Definitely hit across that one. And first what? scoring opportunity for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Mm. Not a great chance, obviously, but he usually manages to find a way around these things. Three. This could Four. develop the pink and reds because the black's tied up at the moment also. So how hard will he hit this? Oh. Might just be able to get through. No. It's tight though. It's very tight. In fact, I don't think he can get through to it. Bit unlucky there with the split. Yeah, it wasn't totally ideal on the blue he couldn't get loads of power into that Ronnie O'Sullivan no but he'd be very disappointed if he doesn't cover it that red with the blue he wouldn't have been playing to leave the red there just caught the pink half ball full ball contact would have been better, but he was still a bit unlucky there. The difficult thing for Neil here, of course, he's playing off the side of the pack here, but obviously that red on the left-hand side is the one he's got to keep covered. Cue ball virtually in the same place he played from should be ideal. Mm. Well, he hasn't done that. And if Ronnie can pot this red and manage to get the cue ball out, then it's a chance. He could finish on the pink here if he hits the reds. One. A quick glance at the pink, can't get through to that, but uh, the main part of that shot was potting the red. It's a medium length blue, normally very reliable with this type of shot, but uh, he hasn't had much table time. through it beautifully Six. struck seven 
Yeah, it's not a brilliant chance, this, the way the balls are positioned. Obviously, the black is out of commission, and pink's going to get tied up back on its spot, it looks like. Now, is there enough room? That's the ball marker that will tell the referee whether it spots, and there is enough room. And as John mentioned, the pink now tied up, so we let 30. it play up for the blue. He had a look to see if the pink would go into the left corner, but we find out the way he plays the positional side of the shot, if it pots or not. Well, it does. 14. The pink does pass that red by the looks of things. Well, maybe not. Otherwise, he would have played it. He did look at it, so Ronnie would have known whether the pink would go. But once this red right. is removed, it could develop it. No, no way that pink would go in there. Twenty. Yeah, just can't quite get the position he likes at the moment. He's just slightly off with each shot, and of course the bump there doesn't help because it actually puts him straight on the blue. Might have been top side. So another good medium range pot to screw back and back for the blue again. Oh, 25. Tough. The white might go close to the left middle pocket. You'll have to be careful here. Oh, no. Hit it lovely. 26. Yes, and it's hit it beautifully. Really well struck. And the best thing there is the position you'll see, there's three reds below the pink, two of the bottom ones definitely pot now. So he's got an area to play in there. Straight away, that's where he is. 30. Thirty-one. Well, there didn't look to be many points available to him when he came to the table. The balls are all tied up. He's making a terrific job of this. Always nice to see the big breaks going in when they're all sitting nicely. 36. But when you see them having to work hard like this, it's very skillful 37. indeed. Now if he's straight, now he's got a slight angle. So he can force this in. And I think both the reds might pot one next to the pink. And the one below it may do so. Hasn't he taken these well? I mean, the table when he first came to it 42. wasn't brilliant, but so far this has been superb. 43. Both players in good neck, Dennis. And that's what everybody wanted, this uh, packed house at the Alexander Palace and everyone watching at home. We just wanted to see both these players playing well and it looks as if we're going to see that. There's always 50. something a bit special about England playing Australia at any sport. Fifty nine on, lead is sixty, so just make sure of this red. Fifty seven. Absolutely wonderful break this. Not many players I can think of would have come to the table and won the frame from this visit. But O'Sullivan has. Absolutely brilliant break. Sixty three. Neil's having a look. Ronnie O'Sullivan, sixty three. Signal to the referee, but that's enough. So Ronnie Sull Sullivan has returned the compliment. He got one chance and he made enough to win the frame. Great stuff. One each. I like that, Hazel. It's brisk and it's brilliant. But that's not a brilliant break-off shot from Ronnie, although I suppose he's got away with it a little bit. Miss hit that completely, went down the wrong side of the blue, so just hit it far too thin. You don't see this very often.
Excellent. Great weight on the cue ball, but slightly took it off the side of the path, opened a few balls out. Quite an attacking safety that was. key part in this match the safety and tactical side of the game is who puts in the better safety shot that's going to create the better chances yes he can just sneak past the yellow I think for the the bottom red just double checking on that well is it tight that's maybe why he's having a look at this end of the table when you can thinking about leaving the cue ball up this end If he's taking this amount of time about it, it's obviously some degree of difficulty. Yeah, the white's close. Some very good. Safety shots from both players here, John. I'm about to say, Dennis, last three shots, all absolutely top class. You're going to need another one. That path is blocked off now. The one can't clip off the one that was near the side of the pink, so that's gone. I mean, a perfect world. Near the light, light of your playoff, the red you can see there, and go off the side cushion and just dump the cue ball on the top rail, but he can't do that either. Can't see the right side of it. Problem this. You'll try to find the safety shot. There's a potable red, the one that's closest to the black, but if you missed that, you'd leave all sorts. So, can he find the correct spot this end of the table? That's pretty good. Sometimes you're just in that much trouble that you have to play what they call a containing shot and, and just stand for it. He played it well, got himself out of trouble. He's got to get this right. He wants to cover the one that's near the left corner pocket and he's judged that to perfection. <coughs> Had to get a good length in the cue ball. If he had to come up short with uh, a potter like me, Robertson, he would have uh, taken that on. But you can't pot them if you can't see them. No, it's the old adage you used to say, didn't it? A chess with balls. Yeah. It's certainly chess at the moment. That's four, four or five shots, all been top class. All trying to put the opponents in the maximum amount of trouble. Yeah, and I think there's an awful lot of people that watch snooker that like to see this type of game, as well as seeing the frame-winning breaks going in. I think he's just trying to drop dead weight on a, a red on the top cushion, is he? Or well, he hasn't judged that how he wanted it. That's a big mistake. Big mistake. Hmm. Not very close at all to what he was doing. Fun. Good opening red, but uh, pink and black tied up, but after the break we've seen in the previous frame 
That break of 63 from nowhere. Absolutely nothing on. In a few shots time, he may have that pink and black in play. Funny enough, he didn't hit that one very Five. well at all. Just about sneaked in off the, off the right-hand jaw there. That's not how he played it. So this is a, a bit too close for comfort missing that one. So a change of plan with his positional play. And he's got to find the gap to get round for the blue here. He's not made his mind up yet to what shot he's playing here. <laughs> He'll be very Six. disappointed with this contribution here. Had a table of his mercy after the first red that he knocked in. He at least manages to sort it out then, doesn't he? I think it's a little bit of a bonus that he can just get through to the blue, otherwise he was in a bit of a hole there. Blue ball. Money O'Sullivan, six. Cued beautifully, and where the cue ball's finished might be ideal. Okay, they're far from easy along the top cushion like that, but uh, the fact he's got an angle, and you can see the long pot straight in the middle of the pocket. Can he force an angle out from the green up the table? And the scoring opportunity is yours. He needs to get somewhere. Well, anywhere near the circle would leave him a red if he can force the angle. Uh, he's OK. He's coming on past it. There's another couple of reds available, I think. Yeah, it was even better than I thought. And if it wasn't even Four. a shot he had to force it, mm. it was a perfect angle where he finished. So there was no problem there getting back down the table. So Ronnie had a first look at these reds and colours. What can Neil Robertson make from them? See if he screws back off that one that's almost straight. He could catch the other red and go completely out of position. Yeah, it's a funny situation. Not ideal on either of them. When he's come down the table, he must have thought, oh, it'll be perfect here. Got to be on, got to be on something. Well, he is, but it just requires a bit more positional play. And it's his turn to make a mess of it. Five. I don't know what that shot was, but it wasn't what he wanted. So both players making a positional Black howler. He needs a thin one here to avoid the middle pocket. Neil Robertson five. Now that has opened the game up substantially now that the pink and black are in play. One mistake now could be very costly. If you'd have told me it'd only be six points to five after those two chances they'd been given, I'd never have believed it with these two. So that's a very rare occurrence for both players to make a mess positionally.
I would suggest looking at this table though, Dennis. Whoever makes the next mistake or pots the next one, they won't be making too much of a positional ladder with the way the balls are now. These are spread absolutely beautifully. So a big break will be in the offing if you can get the chance. back down the table for Ronnie if you can see the one the right side of the table you can thin one off that but I prefer the other one the left side of the table to double it back towards the black and the white will head back up past the yellow and blue just depends how he feels so he's going for the thin one the right side of the table Oh, this could be a nice flick. Yeah, he's uh, extremely adept at that shot, Ronnie, the thin you, clip. Watch him when he practices. He does a, quite a bit of that as a routine when he plays those shots. Just to get the very edge. Hmm. Hit the red, but... Great pace on the cue ball there. I think he'll play the pot on this. No. It was a very thin clip and he didn't fancy playing the pot there, Ronnie, so I agree with Stephen Henry what he said in the studio he's, he's fully focused today. Ultimate respect for his opponent there. Didn't take any liberties with that shot. It's amazing. The first frame lasted just over 10 minutes. The second frame just over 11 minutes. We're coming up to nearly 14 minutes and there's still plenty of reds left on the table. It's just the nature of how this frame has panned out. But it's still very entertaining to watch to see who is going to make the first mistake in this safety exchange. the first mistake and you know what Dennis that's, even though you're as good as O'Sullivan that's your award for the last shot because as I mentioned he could have played a thin clip on a pot there, he refused it he played the safety and this is his reward for it always looking like trouble that shot wasn't it he nearly actually fluked the red there in the middle but still he's tight on the cushion so needs a good shot to get nicely on the colour here One. And the only thing with potting the black, it looks as if it may tie the black up, but the pink's in the open. So he could win this frame with just potting reds and pinks, believe it or not. The black side of commission, Eight. but there's uh, let's see, four, there's five reds nicely placed where he could keep staying on the pink. No. It's lovely to watch when you play these little stun and screw shots. 15. It's the secret of brake building. 
60. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Mm, he's going back to that situation, how he got the opportunity, OK? We wax lyrical about how good Ronnie is in amongst the balls and his break building, but that safety exchange from the both players, it was Ronnie who forced that mistake from Neil, and it was safety of the highest quality. Twenty-nine. I love to see him play when he's fully focused, I really do. It's it's not great to play against with any other chair, but 30. when you watch him and he's in there and he's fully focused on what he's doing and the concentration levels are there and he wants to win the match, he's very special to watch. 36. 37. Well, he's done well here. He's had four pinks. This is the fifth pink coming up. It's getting more difficult now. 38. And he's playing into a gap there, and that's judged to perfection. 43. So he's going to need 44. one more of the difficult reds, and if he's got a nice angle on the pink, he might be able to get on one. 44. Just the one more that's available, and that's all he'll need. 50. 51 ahead. That's 52 51. ahead with 51 remaining. Fascinating frame. Loved the tactical player from both players. Well, once again, though, an absolutely wonderful break. I mean, in frame two, the 63 was wonderfully constructed. Mm, this is the pink. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 51. Mm, and the fact that that pink came down and just made a little panel on the black has opened up the two reds, so Neil will definitely be carrying on. A little lapse in concentration. He thought he was over the winning line. And he have potted that red, Neil would have stayed in his seat. Or the pink, rather. It's so easy to One. do that. You think you've won the frame and you just have a little lapse in concentration. the shot Ronnie played, misses the pink, comes down, OK, Seven. he's missed it, but watch what happens here. Just flicks the black out the way and puts the two reds in play. Eight. Mm. And because of that, he may have given himself a headache for the rest of this frame. see where he wants to put the cue ball so that he can send the red around the angles towards the green and get the snooker in behind the black when it comes back onto its spot so this frame is far from over and I know it's the best of 11 and we're only in frame three but this could prove 15. to be quite a turning point this frame John yeah, as ever, we always say it in the game, Dennis, it's not always winning the frames you should win, it's nicking ones you shouldn't. And if Neil Robertson could win this frame against what's happened in the frame, a brilliant 51 from O'Sullivan, if he can win this game and nick it, what a boost of confidence that would be. Oh, Neil, that's a shocker. Neil Robertson, 15. I can't believe that. That is not like him at all. 
It's what you call quitting on the shot. He never delivered the cue through. I mean, he was hoping to be in behind the black and send the red away up towards the green. He walked away in disgust. And there's another nice little flick. <laughs> He's getting a round of applause. He missed the pop by a mile there. That's a trick shot, but the swerve never took. Foul. Um, Ronnie O'Sullivan, foot. <coughs> yeah. Still only two snookers needed. It was quite fortunate there, Ronnie, to miss the pop by such a long way and fluke the snooker. Oh, you're dead right, but. It always seems to be the way, doesn't it? When you've been given an opportunity like Neil was and you miss that chance, the balls don't tend to forgive you for that. And that was a really good chance to get a snooker. And there's another one. Feels that he can just snick this one. Nice, yes, excellent shot. Well, he's just got to play a little swerve here. Just be careful. Sure, you get the swerve on coming on late. You can see it just as it got past the pinky, it turned there. So Neil's decided One. he's gonna knock the red in and the black and take his chances with just the colours on the table. And the brown's not very good, is it? Eight. even if he was to pop Ten. the green and the brown he would still need two snookers sometimes if you get to the blue you might only need the one snooker that's not the case here he'd start looking for the snooker now and there's a chance he can get up behind the black here if he comes off the brown with a little bit of left hand side he can send that white off the side cushion up behind the black has he hit it hard enough Hey Robertson, let's hit 13. that one again. Yeah, once again, not like him. He's not just a little bit out with that one as well. He's quite away. That was a chance. See if he could get a chance to pop the brown and blue, he might take it because then he could tie with one snooker. <laughs> he had a quick glance at the scoreboard and he'd worked that out, hadn't he? Yes, yeah, thought about that myself, Dennis. But if he didn't do it the first time, when he had the chance with the brown before, I don't know when he's going to do it now.
So one good long pot should be the end of this frame. What am I doing here? This frame should have been over about seven minutes ago. That's uh, a snooker. I think you can get enough side to miss the black and swing it and hit the brown. Ooh, only just. <coughs> yeah, I mean, Ronnie, he thought he'd won the frame and normally wouldn't miss this type of shot. Uh, because Neil would have stayed in his seat had that pink had gone in. Now this brown is close. Now will Neil think about potting the brown and blue? Can he see the brown to pot it? He can. Yep. I mean, it's a possibility, Four. but you know what it's like, Dennis, isn't it? If if, if you can virtually guarantee you're going to get the snooker off the pink and black, you generally get one good shot at it, don't you? And, and if you don't get it the first time, certainly the standard we're playing at, most of the players are pretty adept at keeping the pink away from the black and making it more difficult. So, you know, putting your eggs in one basket. Yeah, oh, Robertson right four. He played to pop the blue and <laughs> missed it. I think he was just thinking about where he was leaving the cue ball to give himself a chance of the snooker. So can Ronnie finish the frame off? Five. <laughs> Doesn't matter about the pink. We won't see many frames last as long as this one coming up in 29 minutes. Five. Some brilliant tactical play at the beginning of that frame, but Ronnie made that superb break of 51, and that paved the way for him to lead two frames to one. So naturally, and people take it for granted now, and even when he does it, there's no ripple of applause anymore because they think, oh, well, it's just Ronnie O'Sullivan. Back <laughs> yeah. we go. This is the last before the interval. Pretty good length with the break off shot, but uh, Ronnie may attempt a long red into the left corner. It's the only one he would leave, and he'd be on the black. I've seen Barry Hawkins knock two or three of these in at the start of his match. Yeah, when he beat Sean Murphy last evening, uh, six frames to one. That was. A surprise to everyone, not a surprise to Barry though, although Sean had beaten him eight out of the nine times they played. Dead straight the red. Yeah, very difficult shots those, and of course the one thing you're hoping you don't do is get the double kiss, and we managed to miss that one. Yeah, it's interesting the boys were talking about Ronnie playing his safety shots with the side. It's uh, nice to swing the cue ball around. I think it's actually, in some ways, a little bit easier to judge than just playing plain ball. Just playing plain ball and taking the cue ball up and down the table is difficult to get the absolute pace right, where sometimes playing around angles and using a bit of side, you can more or less guarantee you'd get closer to the, to the cushion. So that's why it does a lot of it. I watched him practice quite a bit and... Uh, Trust me, he puts plenty of time in on his safety play as well. Well, he's got away with that. He, he made a complete mess. He, he's 
confused. What well, you see him egging himself on there. He said, "Come on." I mean, he he just hit that far too thick. But this will cut back. One. Well, giving himself a bit of a telling off there. And the funny thing is, we were talking about him using the side there. That's the one downside of it. Sometimes you just push the cue ball in a little thicker, and that's what happened there. Not like him. So, big, big frame for Neil Robertson to try and level going into the interval. Yeah, he might play for the blue here. Get it back on its spot. The pink's tied up, the black's off its spot. He can pop this red into the left corner and finish nicely on the blue, get it back on its spot. That will certainly help things. Five. And if he's got a good enough angle, he could even play into the pink and reds. Although having said that, it wouldn't be a bad idea to play for the red that's near the black spot. So it's just how he's feeling, but he seems to have enough angle to do what he wants with this. So it's into the pink and reds, and it's misjudged. That was a wide target. Yeah. Hmm. Ten. Okay, he could have hit them, and it could have gone right by us. He thought he would play on the loose reds there, Dennis. There's a few of them available. Well, there you go. Live and die by your decisions. But he'd be disappointed yeah, Robertson, ten. from where he was on the blue not to have scored more points. showed you when Ronnie went back to his seat how annoyed he was. He was expecting Neil to make a few more. So he hasn't been punished. See, I like that safety shot. That's brought the pink into play. Okay, he didn't want to cannon the green, but that's opened the game up. Mm, not his best, though, and he might be in a bit of trouble here for Neil Roberts thinking get behind the green that's what he's trying for but his safety's just a little bit off today it doesn't take much I was good at the start of the other frame I know but just certainly when he's been laying snookers or today and attempted he's just been a little bit off with his pace not massively so but just enough to be magnified in this company Look at the safety success rate, 92% running at Sullivan. Mm, he's got to get this right. And he has. point accuracy there because he could have left one for the left corner one for the middle yes and it's not touching ball so it's awkward to get back down to the bulk area there might be a bit of tapping going on here can't see what else he can do is that a tap or a tip you know the tip tapping we said I'm not sure what that was but it has finished awkward here It's one of those situations where you can't really play off a of red to get back down. Touching ball. Touching ball has resolved the situation, thankfully, and no more tipping and tapping.
This is usually his forte. But goodness me, it's a long way off. I don't think I've seen him miss one by that far before. Thank you. Hmm. Little worrying. Well, it's not an easy starter for Ronnie. Pot's not so difficult, the position's more difficult. One. Yeah, that was a better shot than it looked, wasn't it? To have to screw that with check side. So he still needs a good, uh, another good positional shot. You can see the way it comes off the second cushion here. Watch it straighten up. Keep it away from the reds. He made sure of the pot there, but Six. Uh, didn't avoid the yellow. So. Where is he Has he potted the yellow? Six. Almost. Well, it wasn't an easy chance that, but you know, Robertson would be delighted he. And he got six points off it. I must have thought when he missed that long pot by a mile, he was going to be in big trouble. One. It's still a little awkward, this. He's looking at the brown, but I don't think he's got enough angle to get up off the brown and the yellow. He needs to get plenty of side on it to get up at least past the blue spot area. He'd like to get a bit closer to the reds. And he's got to avoid the middle pockets when he plays this. Yeah, big shot this, really. You just get position. He is on one, Three. but can he get any position off this red that he's landed on. Pretty tight to the cushion. <coughs> no good, that one. You have to play something a bit special to get onto the pink from that red. Very awkward. I'll tell you what, what a method that is. I mean, that is as good a positional shot as you'll ever see. Loads of topspin there. That was a bit special. Well, you don't see a better shot play today than that one. That was absolutely fabulous. Yeah, I played that just to try and clear the black spot. Unfortunately for him, the, the red is still covering it. Eleven. Ah, truly brilliant shot that was. He might need another one here, looking at this. Has he got a bit of angle to work with here? Just a slight angle. Yes, in a perfect world, he'd like to get half ball off the oh. blue and come down and split the pack up with the black. But he's just the wrong side there. And you can see, take him away towards the bulk area. Well, right, just look at the cue power of the Australian there. Loads of top spin and left hand side, but he's going to finish a bit close to the cushion. That could 17. be the end of break. And there you can see all covering each other. <coughs> In fact, the way they finished, 
It's very awkward to get a good safety shot in. He's just nestling onto the black here. Neil Robertson, 17. Yeah, the last two frames, the balls have just gone a little awkward. That's why the previous frame lasted just over 29 minutes. I mean, the first frame was just over 10 minutes, second just over 11, but sometimes the balls dictate what happens and we're back to tipping and tapping again. I'll tell you what, that was nearly a little bit too hard. Hmm. But his heart was in his mouth for a second there. Yeah, nothing you can do when it's like this. Right, the player can get the cue ball back into the bulk area. So you've got to keep playing until an opportunity arises to do so. thinks he can screw down off this with some side and get it back into the bulk area. Got to be careful with these, though. He didn't play a push shot. Push shot is where the uh, tip of the cue, the cue ball and the object ball are all in contact at the same time. It's tough for the referee to um, decide what is a push shot, but the player normally would walk away from the table and declare it, you know yourself if you pushed it. But look at this for a safety. Yeah, great shot. That's trouble. Yeah. All covered up there. Nothing too appetizing down either side. So Ronnie was just looking to see if he could drop on the red that's nearest to the top cushion. tried something a bit special there to try and hit cushion first and swing the cue around the angles but it was very very difficult I was just looking to see if the black goes into the pocket that he's gonna take the red here not sure if it's available it would be a big advantage if the black goes one that is the wrong side of the blue so maybe the black is just that little bit too tight. Well, that looks as if it would, uh, if you were in behind the black, it looks as if you'd be able to pot it. We might have to see a Neil Robertson special here. We talk about Q Six. power. If he takes this red to the right corner, he's going to get a lot of action on this. Let's <laughs> just have a look at this. No, he had an angle, so Seven. he didn't have to screw it back. He's just scrapping for position at the minute, Neil Robertson. He can't quite get them how he wants them. He's slightly wrong all the time. Having to play the cue ball around the table all the time and not how he wants them, so it is a hard work break at the moment. Yeah, mid session interval coming up after this frame. I mean, the first two frames, nah. both players got one chance and made enough to win the frame, but the last two frames, the balls have gone so awkward. Ten. 
Uh, and this is the key shot for the frame. Pots the black. Should play a little cannon onto the red when he runs through, or he can play a little stun onto it. Should leave the other red available. A big chance. And it's in. So no real reason now from this position. Other than bad 17. fortune or a kick or something, why he shouldn't win this frame. These are really good for Neil Robertson. 18. And it's a good effort because he missed one or two shots in this frame and lost the cue ball a couple of times. One attempt at a long pot was a long way away. But if he can get out at the interval 2-2, two, two, he'll be delighted. 25. 26. 33. 34. He won't be coming back to the table here. He'll be heading straight off for his mid-session interval. And sometimes the interval can change things around. And as I said, the last two frames 39. have been very awkward. 40. And I suppose... 2-2 two is a pretty fair reflection, JP. Yep, I would think so. As you say, just because it's awkward frames don't mean they're not important, does it, Dennis? They're all the same. They all count for one. 47. 47. Doesn't matter about that. 47. Ronnie's on his way out of the arena. So a couple of awkward frames, two very good opening frames, and we go to the mid-session interval. Two frames each. Well, with the mid-session interval, I've changed things around. So we had two very good opening frames, and uh, players are just waiting while some of the spectators return to their seats. Thank there. you, ladies and gentlemen. Frame five, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Yeah, two scrappy frames, but still very intriguing. Talking about intriguing, it's always that to listen to Barry Hearn talking. I'm great to see that Stephen Hendry is going to be playing in the seniors, John. We're going to be there, and uh, I'll tell you what, I'd love to see Stephen Hendry back at the Crucible Theatre. Yes, should be a good tournament, that, and more than anything, should be a bit of fun. That's what it should be about. We've all been competitive all our lives, but uh, nothing wrong with playing something with a bit of fun involved. I'm sure it will be. One. <laughs> well, I said the mid-session interval might change things around. Have a look at that for an opening pot. Yes, that was normal service resumed with the Neil Robertson cue action. John, do you think he could drop on the red next to the black? Wouldn't that be something that would open things up? And he might have an angle on the brown to play up onto that yeah, it just depends on what angle he has on the brown as you say which shot he decides to play I mean it's a natural angle to split the pack but I'm sure he won't play that with a loose red there that's pretty good he's got on that red and Five. this opens the black up he'll play up for the blue this time Six. Still a few reds available, but uh, if he wants to, he can go into the pink. It's the sort of shot that Ronnie would play himself, but other players tend to do it slightly different. It just depends how he feels. As I say, he has a couple of loose reds, but he might go straight into the pink. No, he's going to play for the loose ones. The one at the back of the pack, if he gets on that in a few shots time, John, then he can open the reds. Yes, Dennis, he may play in a way for that as well, where he leaves the cue ball low and pots the red and screws off the pack and you bring reds into play and maintain position. So it all depends on how he goes about it. There's the shot he's got now. So he can either, he's got a choice. He can either power it through, but generally the players play the screw 19. back, pot this and 
back for the black and hopefully bring a few reds more into play. Mm. 20. A lot more pressure on this shot than it should have been. Your boot, John. John Parrott was probably the best player in the game at potting balls from when he was tight on the cushion. Yeah, should have had better positional play, shouldn't I? You can only just see the top of the ball. I was thinking about that first session. I think if I was with the two players going into a 2-2, two -two, I'd have been slightly happier if it had been Neil Robertson. Obviously, he was 2-1 down in this match, so it goes without saying just to level it is great. But I just think on the, the balance of play and everything, I think Ronnie was slightly better than him in the opening session. But, 35. Uh, what you've done with O'Sullivan is establish yourself in the match that you, know, you haven't let him run away and you've kept the crowd fairly quiet. 36. So 2-2 two -two at the interval for Neil would have been a pretty decent score. And he's starting this frame like he started the match. Still a couple more reds available 43. after this one. Forty-four. One just to the left on the back of that little bunch of reds is also potable. That's the one that he's dropping yep. on. And then <coughs> 51. He might leave himself from the black to cannon into the reds because he's not that many pots away from securing the frame with one visit. A visit that started with a Neil Robertson special. He's got the angle to play the cannon now. This will determine as to whether he's going to win this frame at this visit. Yeah, he wants to cannon the red that's in the middle there. But he wanted to play that with a bit of screw. He stunned that in there. 59. He needed to have a bit of screw on it, so when he cannoned that, he come away towards the left-hand side of the table there, but he just stunned it in. He must have thought when he played it, Dennis, he was bound to be on one, but if he'd have played the screw shot, he virtually guaranteed he would have been. Yeah, now he's only 59 points, a very healthy lead, but not with the way the balls are situated. Well, he's far from being safe against an opponent like Ronnie O'Sullivan. So he could do with knocking something onto a cushion if he's playing the safety shot here, just as a little bit of insurance. But it's not going to be easy to put a red safe and guarantee a good position for the cue ball. I mean, he could possibly take a pot on, but he need, he's going to need a bit of help. He's going to need the swan neck, I think he's asking for. We've got three types of spider under the table there. This one, yeah? That's the extended spider. I mean, he can play this as a shot to nothing, but it's awkward queuing. I mean, he's going to need the extension on his cue. He won't be able to s really see the shot because he's so far away from it. His eye line, he'll just have to judge it because the cue will be so far up in the air. I mean, it helps that he's just over six feet tall. So you play the pot and play the safety shot also. Awkward. <laughs> yes, very difficult Eruption. that shot. 59. Certainly striking down as well and also trying to get some safety with it. It's one of those shots back then, where if you play all out for the pot, you've got a better chance, haven't you? 
if you try and get a two in one shot sometimes you don't get either you don't get the safety and you don't get the pot so can Ronnie make a counter punch there's the first part one and after all the hard work at the start of that frame from Neil Robertson will he have set the frame up for Ronnie O'Sullivan to come and steal it the way these reds are, Dennis, they're lovely, aren't they? Eight. Nine. Couldn't be better, John. Even the one next to the pink will be available because <clears throat> as he pots the red, they're clearing the path for another. Bit straight on the black, but that doesn't matter. No problem. A little bit of reverse side here. What's the white just spin off the cushion to the right? Oh, hang on. What has he played there? Well, 16. I was going to say, it was a careless shot the one before. I know for a player of his ability, a straight shot with a little bit of side shouldn't be a problem, but he shouldn't have been straight. But listen, he's got such a margin for error here and just over hit that. It's a lively cloth, but that was very poor. Now, can he cut this one in? I mean, what a shot this would be. No. So that on your Sullivan, excellent 16. opportunity has disappeared rapidly. One. I bet you Neil Robertson can't contain his excitement. He's back at the table. He must have thought the frame was going. Ball's all in the open. The way Ronnie had been hitting it this afternoon. When he'd had chances, he'd been queuing beautifully. And he's amazed he's back at the table. Be very interesting Five. to see how that affects uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Six. Because he's looked very focused this afternoon, but inside he will be seething at what he's just done. Yes, if you want to give your opponents Eleven. any more confidence, keep doing what you've just done. Twelve. And Neil will be feeding off that. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Complete contrast to the two frames before the mid-session interval, which lasted for just over 29 35. minutes and almost 20 minutes. Thirty-seven. This has been going, well, less than 12 minutes. Forty. <laughs> A little bit of 44. an exhibition shot. So much side on that there. Looked like the white was going to stop near the cushion behind the black, and then the side just spun it up the table. Forty-nine. And there's another exhibition shot from the Australian. 55. And is that in? 
Yeah. 62 in the frame. Two visits. Neil Robertson. An earlier break of 59. Ronnie had a chance to counter-attack. He didn't take it. And Neil cleared up the 62. The Australian leads three frames to two. 62 and 59 there. So he appears to be in good stroke again. And that's a pretty good break-off shot. I mean, if the red wasn't near the black run, he would have a go with the long red into the left corner and play it as a sort of shot to nothing. But because of the red next to the black, he can't. He would leave that on. So just this containing escape off the side cushion, which could have been judged a little better. Doesn't want to be leaving any sort of pot for meal, although it's awkward bridging, so he's not even contemplating that red to the left of the blue. Well, he holds his hand up. That was a nice little flick off the brown to flute the snooker. That's another careless one from Ronnie. Uh, it's just can't keep presenting opportunities. Not that this is a gimme by a long stretch. <laughs> Maybe you can give opportunities if you can't misses them, but uh, thank you. Just starting to look a little worrying there. It was in that frame. For Ronnie, like he was losing momentum in the match. I think he can drop on the black, you know. He can just come round in between the red and the black there. Well, decided that that was a little bit risky, what? but he's the wrong side of the blue. Looked as if he could possibly have held for the black. Six. I'm going to have to swing this around the angles again to leave pink or blue. Seven. No, oh, that's such a good shot. He controlled that beautifully. He really did. That's the type of shot you got to get loads of screw on it and hit it a little softer than you would think. He played that really well. Now, how's your look? Pretty good. Twelve. Thirteen. Just okay. I thought that red was going to block the path for the blue, but it's... Easily possible. Yeah, that, uh, just wondering, even that little shot in the middle pocket that Neil Robertson missed, how important is that in the context of the match? He got himself from 2 1 down to lead 3 2. First opportunity. It's little things like that in these matches that make all the difference. Certainly with the top boys. 18. Nineteen. Yeah, here's the shot in the middle pocket. Just it's the far jaw. Instead of it being your opportunity, it's gone to Ronnie. Will it be costly? Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Pink out of commission. Black a little awkward. I'm not sure if it's available into the right corner of the black, but he's got the perfect angle on the blue to get back into nice position. The black's available, but he needs to be straight on this red so that he can roll it in and leave that black. But 28. if he's not straight on the red, no. He'll have to wait for another chance. Back up for the blue again here. 
29. A little bit pacey this time, so a slight change of plan again. Yeah, one of those shots, Dennis, is where you, you probably err on the side of being a little pacey, just in case, you know, if you, you can end up on a ball colour instead. Oh, you don't want to be missing the green. When you're Sullivan, 29. Wow. Well, all I can put that down to is a lapse in concentration. Or maybe a little bit of the previous frame in his mind. Yeah. If he's not got position, he's been very lucky. <laughs> He was looking at that red at the back. Does it pot? Hmm, difficult to know. <laughs> oh, that was your answer, but I didn't expect Neil to make a a poor attempt of getting the cue ball in the book area. Not left anything, but giving Ronnie an easier comeback. Not the best, because you can't afford to leave Neil Robertson. These long pots, he's so good at them. One. Oh, and that's a useful cannon on the blue, as we show you this terrific long pot again, but wobbled a few times, but without the cannon on the blue, he would have been out of position there. He's got an angle on the brown to get back up to the reds. Say, Dennis, one or two worrying signs at the moment that Ronnie O'Sullivan's looking second best in this match. Lost the position in the last with the chance of a clearance. Green off the spot that you wouldn't expect him to miss ever. Six. Yeah, uh, make no mistake about it, the Australian Neil Robertson will pick up on those couple of errors that. Ronnie has made and we'll give him an extra little boost. Listen, as a competitor, you can remember as well as anybody when you sense a little bit of weakness in your opponent, it's 13. Time for you to make the most of it, and you can see that's what Neil Robertson's doing. 14. I don't know whether he can bring any reds out. Yes, he could 22. just force through and bring the single red out. That was a good shot. He could have done with getting a little bit more side on that. He may have to go up the table if the blue's available. He can play on that. I mean, it'd be nice to get the blue back on the spot, but not. <coughs> Essential, but that's what he's got in mind to pop this red and leave himself on the blue and then get back up to the scoring end of the table. 30. And they'll have a little look before just to see if the three reds that are behind the pink, uh, there was a chance of a plant, but I don't think that's on. So there's nothing there. So. What do you do here? Do you play for the single red or do you take the chance? He's got a natural angle to come off the side cushion and play a cannon into that pink and three reds, but it's not a very big target. Yeah, that's the angle he has if he wants to play into the pink. He's just looking at the single red, but he's got a couple of options here. Yeah, I don't blame him there. I think if he can... Yeah. Pop this red and well, I think he might have the cue boards got a little further. If he could play that and then 
potted the red and come on the so blue. It's a, quite an easy cannon off the blue into that pink and three reds. Yeah, I think it was a little awkward for him. The white was a bit too close to the cushion to risk potting the blue and disturbing those three reds and pink. Mm, it didn't cue that well. Bill Robertson, 35. Just cued across that one slightly. For a potter like Neil Robertson, you'd have to say that's a poor miss. Get the nice little half ball on the blue, and this is all about the cannon here. Just needs these to open up and land on one, and they'd be a massive favourite in this frame. And that will do. Six. Nice to have Seven. plenty of enthusiasm, but just shouting out at the wrong time can put the player off. Well, I mentioned earlier that'd be slightly worrying times. It'll be seriously worrying times if he doesn't win the frame 14. from here. Because these are absolutely lovely now. Fifteen. To level the match at three each. Okay, green to brown could be the only slight hiccup, but you wouldn't expect it. Well, what have we had? Four or five matches that have gone to a deciding frame already? Yeah, certainly four, yeah. This <laughs> 23. Another one of those that might go all the way, John. Yes. Neil Robertson will be sitting in his chair, kicking himself about the red that he missed. OK, it wasn't easy, but he was in command in the frame. 28. And somebody as good as him would have been fancy in knocking that one in. Just needs 30. to make sure of the green. 24 the difference. This will secure the frame. 33. Yes, of course. He didn't have to take position on the brown. Just needed that, but he did. And a good response 37. from Ronnie. And once again, we're all square. Great match. 42. 48. Well, there's the Neil Robertson. Oh, yes, a chance know. there to open up a two-frame advantage. He didn't take it. Ronnie O'Sullivan took his chance. We're all square. Three frames each. Halfway through the match. Yeah, bring it on. Bring it on, yep. As I say, it's always nice to see the centuries flying in, but sometimes it's nice to watch this sort of snooker where both players are missing the odd chance. I think they both want this one so badly, John. Yeah, there's a, a good intense rivalry here between these two. Both got the ultimate respect for each other's games. And you know, sometimes we say about Ronnie that, you know, some matches he plays in are a little bit easy for him and, you know, he's not getting tested, but he's going to get tested this afternoon, that's for sure. And you can see from his attitude, he's enjoying it. short run he might be tempted here because I think he can get around the back of the black and red if he takes the pot on here no, 
That's okay, he hasn't left anything. the angle like he's less for Neil. Is it a shot that he can play and screw back to the bulk area? Has he got a pot at one? Yep, there he goes. Well, you never know where the red that you play is going to go, but <laughs> it's finished up okay. Is he a very attacking shot on here? Whether he'll take it, I don't know. Oh. He's decided to play the safety shot. And a good one it was as well. There's a pot and the red on the right hand side of the cluster there where you can play it and screw back for blue. He wasn't having any of that. Well, he's taking this pot on, but keep your eye on the cue ball. It's going to head towards the black and reds, and where will it finish up? He's found the gap, and is he going to finish on the green? One. I mean, if he really powers the green, and he's left-handed, so he might be able to reach round. He's just over six feet tall, so he's got quite a stretch. But even then, he have to f force this, and he, he could miss the pot if he tries to hit it too hard. Yeah, that's the other thing about it, Dennis. Is it looks like it's tight on the cushion, so it's not like totally over the pocket. It's not a complete gimme. This still got to cue it well, just to make the pot. Green pot. I think he's trying to get in behind it, just cushion first. Neil Robertson won. <laughs> he had to use the jaw of the pocket and just misjudged it slightly. This is a similar sort of shot for Ronnie. I mean, Neil found the gap. Where will the cue ball go this time? Mm, this is a little bit hard. He's got to power this, hasn't he? Oh, oh, well, you hit that. oh what a kiss. One. Uh, they say you make your own look. You deserved it after that pot. And that was brilliantly, brilliantly struck and controlled. Seven. Eight. Perfect. Just feel as with this match, the way it's been going, certainly in the last few frames, the boys mentioned in the studio that there haven't been one visit winning these frames. You just feel as if one player can just step 13. it up and grab hold of this match with some scoring. He could run away 14. with it. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Still got that one red at the back of the bunch that's available to him. Now let's see how he gets onto that red. He's left it in such a way that he can develop a few more, but twenty-nine. Make sure he doesn't lose position though. 30. Yeah, that was brilliantly played. 
played a little stun run through here. Just in there, just kept the cue ball running through. So one good bit of cue in here. And that's exactly what you got. That was beautifully struck as well. 37. Well, he did the right thing there, a little bit like a golfer. He hadn't quite made his mind up, and he got up off the shot and then got back down again. The worst thing you can do is change your mind when you're down on the shot and continue. Yeah, it was also a lot better than it looked, wasn't it? He had to strike down on that. Mm. Make sure you hit straight through the middle of the white, put any side on that 42. shot, you'd be missing it. So it was very well cued. 43. <clears throat> striking down on it right the way through and then screwed back up for the brown a lot better than it looked 's play some sort of cannon off the blue into the reds if he wants but he's just worried about losing the cue ball so he's looking at the single red on the right hand side that's above the pink thinking about coming around the angles off the brown so he's trying to guarantee position here as opposed to taking a chance well he took too long on that has he got a fluke it surely he's not going to fluke it No reaction from me, but that is one of the biggest flukes you could ever wish to see. He couldn't make 47. his mind up. He wanted to well, take the blue down, and play please. a Thank little you. cannon. He didn't want to risk that, and in the end, he got down and just missed the brown by a long way. But how did he fluke it into that corner pocket? And is, is this a plant as well? Well, no, he's just played a few strange well, shots. Sullivan, 47. It's as if he lost his concentration somewhat i mean he just got down quietly please i mean the plant if the plant was on you don't just get down and hammer it like that mm, it's like as if he felt guilty for getting the fluke one well it might come back to haunt him the way he played that plant there sure but I mean just to hit it that hard didn't give it the chance but this was amazing he just couldn't make his mind up and in the end missed by a long way and then to see it go in off the red six This is not a straightforward chance for Neil Robertson. OK, he's left-handed, so those two reds on the left-hand side cushion wouldn't be as much of a problem for him as a right-hander. But nevertheless, these aren't ideally situated. Thirteen. Has the option here. He could play this firmly and try and flick the red out, or he can drop him behind it. I was thinking he could have played it nice and firm and moved the red that's above the cue ball out because if he missed the cannon, he had the one in bulk. So 21. He chose not to do it that way.
Thank you. 22. Thirty. Not the best position I shot that Neil's ever played. He's probably already thinking about the two reds that are slightly awkward. One very awkward. The one the right side of the table, not too badly placed. Yeah, I'm still going to go back to that shot I mentioned early on in the break, in the break Dennis, when he was on the black. He could have definitely played that firm and tried to flick that red out. I know he's left-handed, but that's a tricky shot where that is. It's halfway up the cushion. So, anyway, to be so negotiated just... later, we'll soon find out. Thirty-three. Well, he's got a slight angle on the black. He's left-handed. He can play to drop in behind it, or he can try and can it out. It's not the perfect angle. He'd have to really power this in. And he certainly powered it in, but not quite far enough. So it looks like it'll Four. have to be a safety, and Ronnie will be relieved because... I think he felt that he might have dished up there, but that was a great effort to bring that into play. Neil Robertson, Ford. So, still in the balances. Frame. When Ronnie missed the brown, he had an alternate shot. We might be able to show you. I thought he could have took the blue and played the cannon on the two reds. He thought for ages and then hadn't quite made his mind up and hammered the brown and missed it. This is a little bit pacey. Oh, the blue. The blue has come to his rescue there. Yes, Neil raised his eyebrows slightly there, walking towards the com box. Thank you. He must have been thinking that was going to be a chance. OK, the green's over the corner. That might have been stopping a pot, but nevertheless, he wasn't planning on being snookered. There we go. <laughs> yeah, nice blue, he's saying. <laughs> because if it slips past the blue, the red, he would have had a chance. Maybe not to pot the red, but certainly to put Ronnie in trouble. As it is, he's got to negotiate this swerve shot and knock it safe. Yeah, and the thing with it, of course, is he's got to get the swerve on it. And where he's going to hit the red, he could be knocking it towards the yellow pocket. So he was in a lot of trouble there, and he'll take that. He might, might not like the next shot. Ronnie can get in behind the black here. He hasn't hit it hard enough. He's missed a trick there. I see that the ties, you know, the back to wearing normal ties, and you could see Neil pulling at the tie. That's why we used to wear bow ties even during the day, because the normal tie gets in your way slightly. Oh, that's right over the pocket. I'm a massive fan of Neil Roberts, and I really am, but I think he's played two or three shots today. Uh, totally out of character for him. He never, ever does that, what he's just done. One. For him to play that, I mean, obviously, the priority there of that shot is do not put the object ball over the middle pocket. It would be a frame that would be sore whoever loses Seven. it, Dennis. Yeah. 
No. He overhit that, and now it's going to be awkward because he needs the brown also. He's having a quick look at the scoreboard there, 15 ahead. Needs green and brown, and he's going to need a little bit of assistance here to get to this. I don't know if he can do it with the rest. Might just be able to cue past the blue. But he could miss this if he hits it too hard. No. Yeah, I was about to say, Dan, that's the one thing that worked in his favour there, was he left an angle. It's one of those ones you 12. can play with a bit of run inside just to flick it in. That was the good news about that shot. Well, one good long pot, and we're right down the line of the shot. It's there. 16. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 16. And concentration, but Neil needs settle down please a snooker as you can see did that previously in the match when he missed a pink in the middle and then had to wait for another 10 minutes I'll we show you the miss on the blue again that would have kept Neil in his seat It looks like nothing those situations, Dennis, but you know, it stops your momentum. It looks like you're going to win the frame, it's all over. Get your chair, four, three up. And you can give yourself, well, 10, 15 minutes of complete aggravation for no reason at all. Been a funny frame, this. It's had a little bit of everything. snooker there's nowhere Neil will be potting the blue if he got a chance more chance of the snooker with pink and black on the table but as well as playing for the snooker you've got to try and keep the object ball safe oh, he, well he didn't mean to pot that <laughs> he's looking down. <laughs> didn't play to pot that but he might be able to get in behind the black here, but it's more difficult now with just the one snookering ball on the table. And more difficult, Dennis, because the black's off its spot. I mean, if, you know, the closest the cushion for the black is, is a lot easier to get a snooker behind, but where it is now, you've got to be absolutely perfect, and you'd think you'd have to get it right tight in behind there, so he's got one real good shot at it, and it's not great what he's got left anyway, so good luck with this one. I'll tell you what, it's a pretty good Bill effort Robertson if the pink five. holds up. It just ran a bit too far, but it wasn't a bad effort. In or over is how you play that shot. Six in the frame, it's in. And O'Sullivan. It's a frame either player could have won, but in the end, Ronnie O'Sullivan, he'll be absolutely delighted. He gets himself into a four frames to three lead. Frame eight of a possible 11. Well, a good length with the cue ball, but it's a bit of a free pot for Ronnie. He can go around the back of the black and take this on. Yeah, there's an in interesting part in that last frame, Dennis, and, and it ultimately went down to the last red. And there's a shot here when I was saying where Neil Robertson could have potted the black and tried to flick the red out that's just above his, his hand there. And if he plays it nice and firm and plays that and knocks it out, 
you could end up going on to win the frame. But if he missed it, he had a red and bork, so it was a bit of a shot to nothing, really. And I think he may have missed a trick there. Because ultimately, that red was the last one he had to get, and he couldn't get on it. what we call an Aussie special. I mean, one of the greatest long potters the game's ever seen, without a doubt. No, it's just tremendous queuing. I mean, it's such a hard pot anyway, but to, to knock it in with a topspin and get back on the, the correct side of the blue is just a wonderful shot. Yeah, I think I mentioned at the start of the tournament how many great left-handers there are in the game and what great potters they are. Going way back, there was only a few. Perry Mons, great potter from South Africa. But nowadays, I mean, there's so many great left-handed players. Then Jimmy White came on the scene. Six. Mark Williams. There you go. Judd Trump, Barry Hawkins. Well, Neil Robertson six. He knocked in an unbelievable opening red. How do you see him missing one like that? I know. They just, if anything, I was looking at Neil Robertson today and I've not seen him play much this season other than when we bumped into him. His concentration levels is not quite as high as what it usually is. That's the only thing you can say because he would never miss a shot like that. Great pot from Ronnie and did well to avoid the cannon on that red there, so. Ronnie's turn to sense weakness in his opponent. Can he make the most of it? Eight. Nine. Yeah, I agree with Stephen Hendry. Standard-wise, it's probably one of the 16. one of the worst matches. Although it's still very, very exciting. 17. But no century break. Neil's highest 74. Ronnie's highest 63. But been fascinating stuff. Yeah, very similar to yesterday's match with Mark Selby and Mark Williams. It doesn't have to be one visit snooker all the time to make it fascinating. That was a brilliant match yesterday, and Mark Williams. Desperately unlucky, played some fantastic match play. Well, what's going on here at the minute? What is going on? 24. Are we now at the stage where both players are maybe trying that a little bit too hard? got a heavy yeah. contact there One. okay the red's gone in but it spoiled the position outside of the shot I suppose to be fair in this year's Masters there hasn't been a great deal of kicks less than there has been for quite some time I think no, and unfortunately when it happened like blue. it did yesterday for Mark Williams on the blue, Neil Robertson's having to take on here. It was uh, magnified, but this is a big shot to take on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and to do it after the disappointment of the kick and the loss of position is fabulous. Six. Seven. I think he's still keen on winning this match, Dennis, after that shot. As I say, they both want it so badly. But it 
has to be said. Ronnie was in the 40. balls and he was looking good. And uh, he's just gone to clean his hands. A little bit sticky, maybe. And that's gone wrong. It's amazing. I was just about to say with these players, you normally expect them 22. to win a frame with one visit. But what's been happening here, there's all sorts of little things going on. And there's another one where it's ran onto the red and out of position. I don't think it's desperate though, Dennis. He's got the one in the insurance policy in the the bulk area. So he may have lost position there, but the way his long potting's been, this will be going in. Thank you, Steve. So not all bad news there. Got a chance got a chance here. He could pot the yellow off the side cushion and into the pack if he wants to and the red over the middle pocket would be there as well that's what he played but he hit that so badly he was nowhere near it 25. I don't know about you John but you just sense you know normally you'd say they're in they're going to win the frame but you just sense with what's going on you know they're not confident of winning the frame with one visit if that's a three ball plant what a bonus that is no he can't I don't think it'll go in unless there's a gap between the two reds. If those two reds are close together, it'll squeeze it away from the pocket. Now, let's see. The first two to the left, if they're close together, the angle he's got, he won't make, he'll squeeze it away from the pocket, I think. Now, from that angle, maybe. He could possibly make it because there is a little gap between the reds, but he still doesn't fancy it. Neil Robertson, 25. No. 25 for Neil, but he'd be kicking himself that shot off the yellow. Yeah, it's such a margin for error there. Comes off the side of the cushion, goes into the pack with all the balls there, red right over the middle. It was looking like a frame winning chance, but. It's gone now. <laughs> it's good stuff, though, Dennis. I don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> what happened next? I think you used to be on a programme. Question of sport. How many years were you the captain? What happened next? Well, he thought he could pop that. And the white needs to keep running, otherwise he's left it. Yeah, I think he can get past the blue. get in before the white get near the red we don't need anyone like that shouting while the player's playing the shot because it'll put the player he's supporting off six once again though the position not ideal for Ronnie this not a choice of it up into the yellow pocket which is what he's doing but he played for it in the center Well, he didn't take the last one he got, Dennis, but he should be taking this one. The 
this and you get enough bad luck at times in a game if you get a fluke like this. 14. Listen, why not take full advantage? It like left the 15. cushion and then seemed to come back in. I think it was just, there was a bit of swerve on it hitting yep. the angles. I think the side arced it round into the pocket. Listen, I'm with you on it. You get a fluke, you make sure that you get the most of it. You see, it's the jaws and then it sort of it's the cushion and because it's 22. got side on. Oh, they get a flick off the brown. Wow. Twenty three. That brown's been pretty good actually, isn't it? Well it should have been in the other one, but of course he played a plant afterwards with not a lot of care. But what a fluke that was. Thirty. Thirty-one. Oh, he didn't play that too well. That's a bit careless there. Misjudged the cannon completely. Uh, he's just battling himself a little bit at the moment. You can see the abject disappointment on his face when he loses position. But you know, welcome to our world, Ronnie. That's what happens to most players. World. <laughs> 37. Yeah, for all the great play and misses and bad safeties and great safeties, you can't beat a little bit of luck. And what a fluke that was. Forty-four. Forty-five. Still the same Neil Robertson, very focused, great temperament, but that was hard to take because it means now that he's going to have to win the last three 52. frames. He's quite capable of doing 54. that as Ronnie overscrews the yellow, but that doesn't matter. And he will stay in his seat or he might leave the arena just to compose himself, but doesn't matter about the green. 54 and that was an unbelievable fluke that Ronnie O'Sullivan got. And no wonder he's leaving the arena. He's now just one frame away from the place in the semi-final. It's 5-3 to the Rock. Against Ronnie since that uh, semi-final victory here at the Masters. And uh, he's really up against it now. Yes, he certainly is, Hazel. And... Uh, <clears throat> Ronnie, a bit short with the break-off shot. Could do with the long pot here. Giving the cue a clean there just to make sure it's nice and smooth. You could do with a couple of Neil Robertson specials. He's at the stage now where he knows he can't afford many more misses. Terrific opener. Just having a look there, Neil, to see if that red, the back of the black, is potable at some stage. 
Obviously not playing on it there, but he's just seeing that if he can pot that and, and get it away from the Four. black, it'll free it, but don't know about that one. Five. And here's again checking just to see. One of those ones you've got to keep the cue ball high so that when you pot the red you can just get a natural angle to screw out for the black. But it's a tough pot in itself, that red behind the black, certainly on these tables. And he'd be absolutely disgusted with that. You can see him turn his head away because the one thing he didn't Ten. want to do was come low. He's got into that a bit too much. Not even sure that pot. It's very tight. Yeah, not from that angle. Had the white have been near and to the right slightly, it would have been OK. He'd worked that out a few shots ago. Mm, Stephen mentioned, didn't he, in the studio that uh, struggling for positional play today. Another example. Another example. New Robertson, 10. There's a shot to nothing because if the red doesn't go in, have a look where the cue ball was. The fact that he potted it, he knew he was always going to have a chance of the brown. Well, boy. To hit it that hard and expect the pocket one. to accept the Brian was asking something. Oh, oh. oh he's fouled it. Ronnie O'Sullivan four. Jan Verhaas was looking and me thought he was okay, but he touched it with his sleeve. Yeah, bad news on the foul. Four. Good news was that red came across and hit the black and didn't leave one on. Could have been all bad for Neil there. There, Ronnie tapped the table a few times. He tapped the table before the white got anywhere near the cushion. He knew where he was going to finish up. Don't mind him missing it altogether with the oh, first attempt. Miss. Much better near doing that than yeah. hitting the red thick. We'll have another go at it. They want to really make contact yeah, this time yeah. because three misses from this situation and you lose the frame. So can he get a thin enough contact here? No. And referee Jan Verhaas will now warn Ronnie. Oh, well, I said earlier today, no, Dennis, is anything else going to happen in this match? Surely he's not going to lose a frame from missing the reds three times. Gonna have to warn you, Ronnie. Okay, you've got eight of red this time. 
Yeah, put plenty of chalk on the tip. The last thing you want to do is miss Q. It was a terrific safety shot he played, <laughs> but Neil please. hasn't reacted, but he, he couldn't stop smiling there. It, uh, it looked from that that he, oh, he must have tried to plant. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dennis, this is a big shot to take on. On your son of them, one. <laughs> Quietly, please. Well, you were right, John. It was a big shot. One. Don't be giving too many chances to someone like Neil Robertson. He was in the jaws of the pocket. It was so close, but very tough shot he took on there. Six. Yeah, it's not a brilliant chance this. Black currently is out of commission. Pink certainly is. Brown on the side cushion. Seven. Not perfect on the blue. I suppose he could take the green being left handed. <coughs> Might actually be a natural angle back for the red that's at the bottom of the cluster, because that'll pot. But is he hampered with his queuing? Hmm, looks like it. Well, he's looking at the blue to the middle pocket. This is a thin cut, and he'll go into the pink and reds. It'll open the game up. Wow. That's a bit unlucky. It was a very seven. thin snick required. Sullivan five. He got the main part of the shot, didn't quite get enough screw on it, but to go in off was very unfortunate indeed. Yeah, and what is an added unfortunate part of that shot? I think he's opened the pink into a potable position as well. I think the pink now goes. That red that he removed from the side of the pink. If Ronnie can pot this and come through. He's got pink or blue that's available. Well, he should have had. What he needs to do is get that focus back that he had at, had at the start of the match. It, it has to be said, just a few little signs that he's getting a little frustrated with himself. He sets himself such high standards, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Didn't have much on, that was a good shot. Neil played there, knew he'd be clipping the red towards the corner, but as long as he could use the yellow, green or blue to cover it up, it was OK. Similar shot for Ronnie here, but one he has to be careful with. Don't hit the bump in the middle pocket either. As he covered it. Hmm. Well, he's covered the one that's closest to the pocket, and the one on the right-hand side, he's hampered by the yellow, so not great for Neil.
just noticed, John, something with Ronnie when he's down on the shot. It's as if he's moving around a little bit. You know, he, he never used to do that. You know, he's rock solid, but detected just a little bit of movement while he was getting ready to deliver the cue. That was just a containing safety. Tough shot these. Yeah, not surprised he missed it actually. One of these ones he really trying to miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's on the thin side. Well, Ronnie's not even looking to see about the red on the right hand side. He doesn't uh, fancy that. Well, that, I suppose, he normally he could have potted that and got on the pink. So. He didn't even look at it, did he? Just while they're replacing it there. Just now you see there's where it is, it's nearly on the brown spot. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Ronnie. Looked as if he could take it on, wouldn't have left a great deal, but he had it replaced. Now it's oh. Neil Robertson's turn to he be missed. warned. He won't even look at the red Ronnie this time. Sullivan four. And of course, if he did it and missed it three times, then this would be frame and match, wouldn't it? Do you know, I think Let's it happened. It, up again, please, Paul. it happened in the Irish Masters, and I think Ken Doherty was playing Steve Davis. So, was it Steve there. lost the match with three consecutive misses? Yep. Yep. You did right. That's what happened. I've got to warn you, Neil. You've got to hit a red this time, okay? Well, you can probably have a good bat. This will be too thick now. Be very careful here. <laughs> yeah, too thick, but I'll tell you what, he'd be glad where it's finished. The blues come to his rescue. Played that with a load of check side, just to straighten the cue ball up. And he's played it very well. And where the Reds have turned out, he's had a little bit of luck, of course. And he's covered those two that are near the corner pocket with the red that's further up. So a little bit of luck in the run of the balls, but it was well played. And at first glance, looks like a fair bit of trouble. Well, that's what he's faced with there. And as you can see, a very difficult situation. You have to give this one a little bit of thought because he knows one mistake here and he could be out of this year's Masters. Yeah, the two reds that are near the top corner, the bottom one, Neil was looking at trying to roll up and drop on but if you don't get that right you're leaving a red into the middle pocket that's what he's had a look at if you can just come up and dead weight and rest on it but you've got to get that right well this is very delicate it's not going to reach. Foul. And a miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan foot. So that was the way he was trying to get in behind yep. that red. And Ronnie's not <coughs> having the one in the middle pocket, so obviously the degree of difficulty with that pot isn't something he fancies. But he's got Neil in 
All right, load of trouble here. Yeah, Ronnie. Same shot, is it? Has he done the same thing again? And then... Foul. And a miss. Yeah. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. And he left to be warned again for the second time. That doesn't happen very often where a player is warned twice in one frame. We've got to warn you again, Neil. Okay, if you play the miss, you'll lose the frame. And yeah, the match. Seven points. The black, will it go on its own spot? Dennis, I think it's the ultimate whammy. I think everything pots. Oh. Settle down, please. Quiet now. He was in so Thank much you. trouble. Thank you. Quietly, please. He thought he had to take on that possible pot. There was virtually no pocket to go in. But uh, some of the balls were very awkward, but have a look at how they've split up. And for well, those to finish like that and get the black on the spot with everything in the open, you couldn't ask for anything more. The only thing is, the way it's gone this afternoon, will it be over? Eight. Nine. They've played each other twice in the Masters. Neil won 6 1 in the semi final 2015. Ronnie won 6 4 <coughs> in round two in 2010. 16. Seven two. Even that shot, Dennis, wasn't played up to his usual standards. He had a, you could see him down on the shot there. He was like in two minds the way he played it. I mean, obviously, it's a black off the spot. He should be knocking this in, but just little odd positional blips from Ronnie O'Sullivan that you don't normally 24. see. But these are just spread lovely. 25. And no excuses now. I mean, before this match started, we were thought we were going to be in for 32 century breaks flying in all over the place. But Ronnie's highest break has 33. been 63, Neil's 74. But I'll tell you what, there's been lots of 50s and 40s and misses. We've had a bit of everything. Yeah, it's been great theatre this afternoon, that's for sure. 40. Um, you know, this audience this afternoon, OK, as you say, Dennis, not... Century's rolling off every frame, but it's been fascinating right the way through. It's actually been difficult to commentate on because we haven't known what's going on. On occasions, we don't know. People looking like they're going to clear up and then poor position and a few missed pots you wouldn't get. But fascinating nonetheless. That's the frame and the match secure. Lee Robertson 46. had a chance to go 4-2 in front. And for me, that was the big, big turning point in the match. The crowd here at Alexander Palace have been very, very 54. fair to both players. A lot of Ronnie fans here, but 55. Neil Robertson's had terrific support also. But it's not going to be his year. Just looked as if he had lost a little bit of focus, Ronnie. He was very up for the start 60. of the match, but just seemed to lose his way towards the end. And probably because he set such a high standard. 61. He's had a few flukes here and there, which always help.
be interesting. Well, you'd be delighted. Damien Hurst there, his good friend. Be interesting to hear what Ronnie has to say about this match. 68. I don't want to have been the highest caliber. Both players, big smiles from each other. It's been a fascinating tussle between these two great players, but there Ronnie acknowledges the crowd, and he'll be absolutely delighted. And in the end, it was a comfortable win, 6-3 for the Rocket. How edgy did it did it all feel out there? Oh, to be honest with you, I, to be honest with you, I didn't really care to be honest with you because the last match I played, I was so ill, I just didn't enjoy it. And today, I just felt like at least I was physically okay. So you know, I know it wasn't great, but I tried my hardest, and I know I haven't been great all season, but I'll keep trying my hardest. And you know, uh, that's all you can do, isn't it? Sometimes. But <laughs> you, know you know looked I mean? focused, and actually, we talked yeah, quite a number yeah. of times about the desire levels between you and Neil, because this is always a big contest between the two of you. Well, uh, I don't know, really. I suppose anyone, any of the top eight that play each other or the top ten play each other these days, they're all tough matches. You know, you've seen some of the results here this week. You know, yeah. Hawkins, you know, beats uh, Murphy quite comfortably. I, I haven't really watched much snooker, but Trump gets beat to foo. So you know, you just everyone seems to be beating each other. You yeah. know. And, I just keep trying to hang in there, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm getting twitchy now. I can, I'm, I'm officially switching. <laughs> a better or a worse performance in this one than against Liang in the first game? No, I just, physically I just felt better. So today, you know, I knew he had to beat me. Whereas the other day, I was just sort of like, I was all over the gaff, mate, physically. I just, and the last three or four days, I've been really ill, you know? I've just, so I took antibiotics, I never take antibiotics. And this is the first day that I actually felt like, you know, normal. So, you know, I was looking forward to playing just because I, I felt decently myself, you know. Were you a bit surprised that, you know, with the misses that Neil Robertson was missed? It sort of makes, it sometimes it gets a little bit contagious, isn't yeah, it? Because yeah. you're not expecting a miss and you get to the table really quick and then you miss. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think I just dragged him down, to be honest with you. I, mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I did, that's what I'm just doing, I'm just dragging them all down to the level. <laughs> and uh, they seem to be missing balls or something keeps happening for me, but, you know, that's all you can do sometimes, you know. Um, I've had a good four or five years where I've just been very consistent. This has been, a, you know, not a great spell for me, but I just, you know, hopefully, I'll turn around and if it don't, then I'll do what these guys do. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more punditry work. I tell you, everybody needs a bit of luck and, and you had a couple of slices oh, of luck in oh, I, I had more luck today than I felt I've had in the like, last 20 years. But um, yeah, I needed it to be honest with you. I just have it right, you know. I needed a bit of luck today to get through. And when you, when you think back on, on silverware, Ronnie, it's been almost a year. You, you beat Neil in the Welsh. And I just wonder, you've been in three big finals the last three months. Does it, does it start to get a little bit twitchy? I mean, what's the difference? I mean, competing at this level, um, clearly you'd rather be winning uh, mm. titles and trophies. But mm. are you feeling that another one is coming your way? No, I think you have to, work, you have to win them now, you know what I mean? You know, um, I played all right against Selby, I must admit, but the other two I was a bit dodgy. Um, didn't think I played well enough to win. Um, but I missed too many easy balls against Mark, you know, and um, maybe that's what happens as you get a bit older, and that's the difference between winning and losing. You know, um, I actually can feel, you know, I think sometimes, like, oh, like, you know, you, you can just sense you're missing too many easy, easy balls. So I need to cut them out, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to keep dragging my career out for as long as I can, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what you can do, isn't it, at some point? Yeah. It's good to be in the semi-final, you know, not playing anywhere near his yeah. best, you know, and still being in there with a chance. It, yeah. can, it can only get better. Yeah, but it's, it, it's nice to know if, you, if your game comes back, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but if I'm at that point now where, you know, I'm, I'm delusional and uh, it's not coming back, then you're just going to keep getting to courts and semis and getting beat. But, you know, it's like, you know, you, you always think you're as, as good as you was years ago. And I don't want to get to that stage where I'm like, waste 10 years where I just keep just playing and think you're good enough, but actually you're not, you know what I mean? So I think I've got, hopefully I've got three decent years left in me. Yeah, but you still believe you can win this? Um, I don't know. You believe you can win it if you're playing well enough, yeah. you know, and um, I don't think I'm playing well enough to win it, but a lot can happen in 24 hours, a lot can happen in 48 hours. Um, but when you go, you know, you, it never comes back, does it? So, you know, that's what I'm saying. I just keep dragging it out. You know, great crowd here. You know, so, um, I'm, I'm appreciative that I'm still playing at 40, 41, whatever it is. You know, I just appreciate every, every time I get an opportunity to go out there and... Uh, you know, um, trying, that's what I'm saying, just try and drag it out as long as you can, innit? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if the pension fund was good enough, I'd have, I'd have probably sold it in there. But, I mean, you've still got a few balls, <laughs> Absolutely. You know Great I mean? crowd to play in. It's a oh, fantastic amazing, atmosphere. Yeah. Amazing crowd. It you must know. give you a buzz, though, still coming out there. It does when you play all right, but when you play a bit ropey and you start missing a few, you start to feel a bit of pressure because you mm. think like they want you to win, they expect you to yeah. clear up, you know? And when you don't, you think, oh, I'm letting down 2,000 people here, or maybe 1,980 odd. <laughs> <laughs> I a few supporters, but um, you know, I was just sort of like, you know, it can get a bit on top of you, you know. But when you're playing well, you just revel in it, you know. But um, yeah, I was a bit twitchy today.
That's know. understandable. But you've got, you got a day and you're going to watch, I'm sure, or at least be aware of it, Mark Allen or Marco Fu. And, oh, okay. and it's going to be a fascinating match between the two of them. I just wonder what your thoughts are on Marco's resurgence. The last well, I watched years. him play. Well, he played me in the UK and I said to him, I knew he'd change his technique yeah. and he looks so much more aggressive. Um, you know, and it's kind of... It's had an impact on all his game, you know, he's always been clinical around the balls, but he actually looks confident now and I think he's going to find it a lot easier to get over the line. I think that's the only thing that held him back. Um, so, you know, and then he played fantastic in Glasgow and he's played a, a great match here against Judd Trump. I don't think he would have beat Judd Trump with his old technique. I think playing with that confidence against someone like that, you, you know, when someone like Judd's playing that well, you've got to go toe to toe with him. And, and, and out punch him and then stay in there to the end and then out bottle him, you know. And I think Marco had done that because he played, you know, he's playing much more aggressive. And I think to win and, and, and be at the latter end of the tournament consistently, you, you need to play that game unless you're Selby who sort of can tie you up in knots, you know. Exactly. And, you know, you talk about bottle. Mark Allen's got plenty of that. He's shown that and he seems to come good. We saw in that final frame decider against John Higgins. It's almost like when the pressure gets a bit more touchy-feely for him, he seems to respond a bit better. Is that your view of him overall? I always thought Mark was a great match player, but I think he's a little bit like Mark. I think, you know, he's, he could probably do with a little bit more of a power game yeah, to, yeah. To, to stay with the top guys, you know, because a lot of these guys, you know, they play, they look, they see one shot and they know it's that shot that opens the game up. And if you can't do that comfortably, you know, you're going to be, you know, it's difficult to, to build momentum and mm -hmm. a lot of these guys can win six, seven frames on the bounce now just through heavy scoring and, you know, it's, it's, it's unlikely you're going to scrap a tournament, do you know what I mean? You might scrap the odd yeah. match, but at some point you've got to start making 80s, 90s and 100s. Are you going to call that match for us tonight? Uh, no, nah, I mean, because I'll call it and I'll end up getting it wrong. And it's easy <laughs> don't worry. And you go, oh, <laughs> <stuff like that." laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just don't have a good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give money um, ammunition. I'm just going to go and just chill out. However it is, <laughs> you'll meet them on Saturday. Ronnie, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Well played today. Cheers. Okay.